All right, that's going to be a tutorial for setting up Dolphin Emulator and also Industrial Perk Level Editor for heavy iron games for least for GameCube, PS2, and Xbox. So this specific one is going to focus on the SpongeBob Battle for Bikini Bottom game. So you will need that game. And you just put it anywhere. You need an ISO. You can get that from an actual disc. You can... I think you know how to get games, so yeah. I have a few other ones on the list, but we're focusing on this Battle for Bikini Bottom. You also need Dolphin Emulator. Um, this one, you'll want the development version. Not You have to make sure it is not stable 5.0. So it'll have 5.0 with a bunch of numbers after it. And normally it'll be blank. You won't have games. You have to click Config, and then Paths. And then here I have a few other things, but you'll want to go to wherever your game is. So mine is in this emulator folder. And whenever you add that, your games will show up and you'll want to click on BFBB or whatever other game, but we're focusing on BFBB today. Properties, file system, and this is all your levels. So we can't exactly edit these just yet. We have to actually extract the disk. And you'll put it somewhere. So I'm going to put it on my desktop called BFBB. Doesn't matter where it's at. As long as you can like save the files. And it's not like in a Windows or whatever thing. You should be fine. And it will take a little bit to finish. And once that's done. We can close out of that. We can go open it up. And here we have files. You saw the levels. There's a bunch of junk files too. That aren't needed but... It doesn't matter for now. So, um, here's all your levels. And then we can open up Industrial Park, the program. And here we don't have any levels loaded. We're actually going to have to load them. You can either do new and then a bunch of other stuff, or you can just drag them over. So we have Goo Lagoon 1. You select both of the Goo Lagoons, and then you drag them on. And now you have your level. It is very messy. If you don't know how to use industrial part, you can either look at the wiki or there's actually a view controls thing right here. And it tells you some of the controls. They look a little weird, but use WASD to move. Use middle click to turn your camera. And then you shift WASD to move like that. So W and S moves forward, shift, WS moves up and down. So yeah, that's basic controls. Um, now you all notice our level is very messy and we can clean this up some. So we have these red bubbles. These aren't, you really don't need to see them 99% of the time. So these are called SFX. You can hide those. We can go in, we can hide triggers, these giant blue ones. We can hide those. And now our level is a little more visible. So we can go back, you click on archive editor. If you ever close out of one of these and then you'll click on this and it'll reopen it i usually like to hide the sky boxes too because they cover up some of the level so you just click on that and then you click this checkbox and it will hide it and then i check the other sky dome and it'll hide that so and as you noticed this gives us a list of objects normally you'll be at the top but if you just click on something in a level, it'll take you right to it. So this one is post 26. Simp means simple object. So this is there just a regular object. There's nothing special about it. You can click edit data. And this will tell us position. It'll tell us rotation values. The scale, which is a size. We can change the color. A model. This is a bunch of different stuff. So... If I click off of this and I change one of these to zero, now it'll be a different color. So now it's like a cyan kind of color. We can manually edit some of this stuff, like we can rotate at 45. Like you can manually edit these if you really care. But the editor can actually do this for us. And you just click on your object and you get these arrows. So this lets you move it around. So I can move it right here. If you right click and go to Gizmo, it lets you change it. 
You can also press a V on your keyboard. So now we have rotation. So what we typed in, now we can just actually see it without having to type in a number every time. And then we have scale. This middle one scales everything evenly. And then these can like make it longer or wider. And then we have low pull, which follows the rotation. So this one will go with how it's rotated versus the other one, which can only go up and down always. So once you've played around with that a little bit, now we can start looking into platforms, which are moving objects. And if we click on display and movement preview, we can see that a lot of stuff in these levels move around. We have the balloons, these spinning platforms, this wood post, these beach towers, there's a bunch of stuff in the level that moves around. So we can actually play with these and change speeds and whatever. So we'll click on our object, we'll reopen our hip. It takes you right to it. Do edit data. We have the same stuff as before, except now there's a new section here called a platform. And you can click on motion and this tells us it's motion. So this one will rotate. It does a rotation on the Z axis and we can change the degree it rotates. So we could change it to 40 rotation time, a smaller, this is how many like seconds it takes to do the whole thing. So if I change it to 1.4, it'll do all of its movement in 1.4 seconds. Acceleration deceleration is it slows down right before it reaches the end of its movement by this much. And then retract, post retract. Once it reaches the end of its movement, it'll wait this time before moving again. So if we click on movement preview, it moves, it waits one second, it moves, it waits one second. This doesn't show the smoothening of acceleration and deceleration, but in game it will. So we can rotate this a little bit. And if you notice, if I try to click this, I can't at all because the, the movement actually does not match what the model is. So if you want to click on something, I suggest turning off movement preview so you know where it's located. So once you get this wherever you want it, however you want it, you can click save and now we can go test it in game. So. As you can see, we only have the regular BFBB. Like this won't have our change level. So we need to actually add our change level. So you go to back to paths, click add, go to wherever your game is, and then sys, S-Y-S is what you want. And now here it is, I have a tag. You can add a tag with a written new tag, type in whatever letters you want. And then you select that tag and it makes it easier to tell them apart. Or you could, if you have the size enabled, you could see that the sizes are different on them. And we need to do one more thing so that we can actually test this a lot faster. So you open up your files, BFBB files, and then at the bottom, near the bottom, SBINI which I already have open. So now we can type in the level we changed, Gulagoon 01, and we do not want to show the menu. So you press zero. Now, whenever we go in game, we will spawn directly into Gulagoon. Uh, and you could walk all the way to your thing, but we have some AR codes. So we have a warp anywhere one, and we have a fly one. These are really important for testing mods. And to enable these, you have to go to Config, General, Enable Cheats. And you have to do that whenever the game is turned off. And this will let us just warp directly to where we change stuff. So now we have our platform here. We have our green one. And then we also have the one that moves a lot more. So that is very basic editing done. Now we can start doing a little bit more advanced editing. So we can go back in here and we can click on, let's say this balloon. 
balloon A. And this one is also a plat, so, but it's a different type. If we click on motion, you'll notice it doesn't have rotations. It doesn't have any movement. This one uses move points, which are these blue triangles around the map. So this one uses move point 01, and it also moves at a speed of 1.8. So this speed, the higher it is, the faster it will move. So if I change this to 5, now the balloon will move like double or triple the speed. And we also clicked on one of these move points, and now we can move those. And the balloon will follow these paths. So if I change this up some, just up and down, and I click on movement preview, you'll notice now the balloon is faster and it also follows our new path. And there's a lot of different platform types. There's the mechanism, which is just basic movement, rotating, moving up and down. There's a move point where it follows a path. There's springboards over here, which are trampolines. And if we click on this, the motion tab does not use this. It does not use the motion tab. It uses plat specific. And this one gives you heights. It gives you an animation if you want to use that. And it gives you direction. So you could play with these to get sent to different places. But for now, we are going to save this with our new balloon. And we can go back in game. You don't have to close the game every time you want to test this, by the way. So if I load in here, we'll notice our balloon is now much faster. And now if I go and edit this, like I move one of these all the way over here. I just do extremes. I can go in, I can save it. And then I can just reload a level. And now it will be saved. So you only have to reload the entire game if you add objects or you delete objects. But if you just change some numbers or you move something around, you do not have to reload or restart the whole game. So that is your kind of basics to industrial park we haven't done anything super complex yet but that will be covered in the next video